Hey friends, Patrick got here and you have asked for it. And here it is. As promised, more Mud Blazer. We go deep into the edit form this time. So as promised also last week, we created the edit form and had a tiny look at validation with the default built-in components of Blazor WebAssembly. And today we will use all the, well, not all the, but almost all the Mud Blazor components you can use for an edit form in Blazor WebAssembly and also Blazor Server actually, but I think Blazor WebAssembly is more important here and you also like Blazor WebAssembly more and blazer server i think anyways so edit form with mud blazer it is also a little bit of validation stuff we will have a look at the also at the mud table also the simple mud table we will install mud blazer and then in essence replace all the components from last week with now the mud blazer components so we will use the uh, input text stuff in essence we will use a text area numeric fields date picker select box radio buttons and the file upload and the checkbox so also a switch then i think these are all the components we are going to use so a bunch of stuff actually and if you like all this and you learned something even then maybe consider clicking the like button thank you very much and maybe you also want to subscribe to my channel this would mean the world to me so thank you very much for that also don't forget to click this bell icon here with that you get a notification when the next video is online and also when you subscribe to my newsletter then you will get these videos here a couple of days earlier in your inbox people like that already so maybe this is also something for you additionally you will get early access to the upcoming dotnet web developer bootcamp there we will cover the back end of dotnet web api energy framework secret server and also the front end now with blazer we will put some stuff with that and also have a look at gits and scrum and a little bit of devops maybe this is something for you then please consider subscribing to my newsletter and the last thing and then i'm done with the intro thank you so much everybody for all your support the coffees the teas the orange juices the water also very important so thank you very much for that makes it a lot easier to well create these videos here so thank you very much for your support i love you forever guys and now enjoy the tutorial all right now before we start visual studio real quick i rarely do this in my tutorials but i want to encourage you to clone this repository here this is from last week's video the blazer edit form tutorial where i cover blazer edit form the blazer edit form and validations and we will build up on this thing because there's lots of boilerplate code that we would have to write again and i did this already and if you want to follow this tutorial and write the code with me together with me then i um, recommend cloning this repository here and then you get the complete edit form in essence done with a default blazer components and bootstrap stuff and then we can use this to well change the the components and use mud blazer instead because what we have to do is we have to install mud blazer first so we will do that so this is already some boilerplate stuff we have to do and uh, then we can already use it but otherwise if you would start really from scratch in this mud blazer tutorial it would be way too long i think to learn all this uh, mud blazer stuff here so if you want to write the code with me again please clone this repository if you don't know this yet you can actually copy this and get a github desktop start this thing and then simply by clicking file clone repository and then enter this URL here. You can download this thing or clone it, change the directory for instance to Mud Blazor edit form tutorial and then you should be good to go. And when you have this thing and then open Visual Studio in this folder or simply the solution file, you should be here. You should see this project here, still called Blazor edit form tutorial. Please bear with me. Now we're going to change this to Mud Blazor. And then I will, of course, by the end of this video, add this uh, to GitHub as well. And you can actually already get the complete source code when you scroll down to the video description and click on the GitHub link. Well, first, real quick a recap what have we done in the last week's video? We added models. So we want to use all the built in components 
or we wanted to use we wanted to use all the built-in components from uh, blazor we did that and now we want to change all these things and use the corresponding mod blazor components instead so we've got a model with an id We've got uh, a name, a bio for the text area. We've got the birth date and image, which is a base64 string, but still we will use a file upload component to, well, display this image then. We have a team ID and a difficulty ID. This is for relational stuff, meaning we will use uh, radio buttons for the team and also a select box for the difficulty. And then the last thing is the checkbox for is ready to fight. So these are characters that want to fight. And if you haven't seen last week's video, then maybe you will be surprised to see what kind of character this will be. Then also the difficulty here as a model with an ID and a title and also the team ID and name. And the last thing then already is the characters page. And in here then we have, as you can see, already built a table and also an edit form with all the Blazor default built-in components. And down here, we've got our code in essence. We could change that to a code behind file or just leave it as that. And here you already see one of the characters. This is the first one we will see. And I would say, let's just start this thing to finish this recap. And then you know what this little app is all about and then we move on with Mudblazer. So I guess this introduction is way shorter than uh, the other option where you would have built all that from scratch again. So this is our characters page. You see a little table here with just the image and ID and the name. We can click on the edit button and then see all these fields are filled. We can choose another file here, for instance, now this is the image of Iron Man and we already see the change here. So we do not have, in this particular case, uh, we do not have to uh, click the update character button because this is every, everything is done locally. There is no call to web service whatsoever. I just wanted to focus on the complete edit form here on the client in essence. And of course we can also create a new character. Let's say we add ID two. Yes, I know you shouldn't have to uh, add the ID manually here but uh, I think this works for now. Add an image, create character, and we see Batman here in the table. Okay, so this is done with Blazor and Bootstrap alone. And now we change everything here and use Mudblazor. So the first thing we have to do is, of course, install Mudblazor. Uh, you come here by simply Googling for Mudblazor install or Mudblazor installation. And then you see this little page here. Easiest way to do it is using the NuGet package manager. And then we have to configure some stuff. So we will use this page here to configure Mudblazor. And then we are already all set and can use Mudblazor. So first back to our project, right click the client project here and manage new get packages and here we are just searching for mudblazer there it is already make sure to choose the browse tab here that's the one not markdown not the theme manager nothing like that we just want to use mudblazer with already 700 and 761k downloads so pretty famous stuff accept everything and then we just switch between this page here and Visual Studio. First thing is the imports razor. There we wanna add mud blazer. And that's it. After that, we wanna add fonts and style references. So let's copy this and back to the index HTML this time down here we add this then the script reference now at the bottom as it says here located at the end so down here this is our script and well we could remove the site css but let's just leave it here and now the components these are the ones we need well in essence we need the theme provider this one is essential but the other ones 
we don't need. So it's up to you what you want to add here. But let's just go to our main layout here. And down here now, we just add these three, for instance, and then we are done. We have installed Mud Blazer. And the first thing I want to show you now is the simple table. So back to our characters page. And let's just close all other tabs. And up here now we see this table, right? Now we already did some work with the table header, the table rows and so on. So we can, if you just want to use the design of Mudblazer, switch this thing here. So instead of the default table, we say Mud simple table. And there are some parameters we can add here, for instance, if you want to highlight a row on hover, we can do that. Additionally, we can have a striped design. And also we can use a little dense design. So we save some space here. Let's also add the component down here. So much simple table this, I would say we save this thing. And of course, we want to rebuild and apply the changes. And we get an error, of course. Let's have a quick look. I forgot something. Dialog service on type of there is no registered. Sure. I forgot to add this service here, of course. Don't know why I skipped this, but I'm sure you knew that this is coming, this error is coming. So now here in the program CS, let's just add this thing and add the corresponding using directive, save this. Okay, I don't know why this error is now coming, but let's just, okay, now it is working. And you can already see the different table here, the other table, this is now Mudblazer. Of course, there are still some spacing things we could do, but Let's do this one step after another. We will change this button here, for instance. We will also change the image. So let's make this smaller and so on. But you already see how fast this works if you don't forget to add this service here when you're installing Mudblazer, right? Maybe I should take a zip of my coffee and then these errors won't happen anymore. But as always, it is pretty late again. Half past nine. For me, this is... This is really late. All right, so we've got this now covered. Mudblazer is installed. You see the mud simple table. And now let's use a complete new table, which is the mud table component first. I know this is not the uh, edit form yet, but again, let's do this one step after another. And I think that way you see a bit more of Mudblazer. And I just think that this is a pretty nice UI component when you're building Blazor applications. And I'm pretty sure I will also use this with my next update of the Blazor e-commerce course and also in the upcoming .NET Web Developer Bootcamp. And if you're interested in this bootcamp, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter because then you will get early access to this thing. All right, enough with the commercials. Now we use a mud table and this already looks a little bit different, but it's not only a little bit different, it's way different actually, because we do not use these default HTML tags, these DOM elements here, we use only Mudblazer stuff now. And this works like that. First, we have to add our items. In our case, these are the characters. Real quick, down here in the code block. And yes, I know some of you already suggested to use a code behind file here. You know what, let's just, let's just do that. So we extract this thing. I hope it still works now. See it here, now we've got our characters razor CS file with a partial class and now we see the character and here are the characters, right? So we've got our list of characters and already added Peter Parker here. Well, it's sad that I've lost the formatting now and I have the scroll bar because of the 
because of the image. Yep. A lot of way to scroll. But actually, we would not change anything here in the in this code behind file. So no, this is a bit smaller. Well, let's let's just see how this goes. Okay, we've got the mud laser, mud table. And again, with that now, we can set the items. These are our characters, all right. What's happening here with the mud simple? Oh, I've... Jesus. Okay, now, <laughs> all right, now this should work. And again, we've also got the parameters hover, striped, dense. And let me also add one more thing, so first, these two and then regarding the spacing you can always add other classes css classes here and this thing now is provided by mudblazer itself stands for margin bottom two the two is not the pixels the two is just some kind of unit i guess but uh, mb stands for margin bottom so the space below the table is different than when we add this class here. After that, we use the header content component. And here we say mut th. First thing is the image, then the mut table header for the ID, then the name. And the last thing would be the button then, and this is our header content. And then we use a row template like that. So no for each, nothing like that. And then we say mat td with a data label called image. This is actually only necessary for the responsive design. We will have a look at that if I don't forget this. And now what I want to do is we could use the um, the image here, similar to the old table, but we can also use a mud avatar like that. And then the image looks a bit, well, regarding the size, it looks just better. And the image then here is, and this is now interesting, we use context image, right? So it's not the character, like in the for each, well, we named it character, so it is available as character. But here now in the mud table, we've got our items. And to get the, the current character, the current item in uh, this uh, table, we use the context variable here and use the image property. So this is our character with the image. And then we've got our image, the avatar. So now, what's the right pronunciation? Avatar, avatar, avatar? I don't know. Data label is then the ID with context ID. Let me copy this. We've got another one and also another one. So now we've got the name here, also here and now here. This will be the edit button. And let's use another component already, the mat icon button. So not the mat button that is also available, of course, we will use that as well. But now here, I want to use the edit function. As you can see here, edit character, we can go there, I hope. There it is, edit character. This just means that we will have a look in our list for the same ID and so on, and then we will fill the edit form. So on click will be the edit character with the context id all right and because we want to use this parameter we have to use the lambda expression here and after that we want to add an icon and there are lots of icons provided by 
mud blazer this is really really nice much many more items uh, than uh, with open iconic which is the default icon set of blazer so that's then our icon then we've got the color let's just say color primary you can change this color set of course and the last thing a variant variant filled okay all right this should be it i saved it and now let's already add another button here this will be the mud button then for creating the character again on click we will use create character and call this create new character all right now this may look a bit crazy now because we have several tables several buttons here but you can already see the change right this is the much simple table with all our uh, custom let's say custom default what's the traditional HTML stuff in essence and here now the mud table this is this little thing here and also you see the two buttons this is the the mud button and this is the other button and what these things do is simply resetting the character to edit as you can see here in the code behind file this is the character and here we just say there's a new character and is new the flag is then set to true Okay, I hope you get the idea now. Let me let me just show you what is happening when we remove the class. So like that. Is it? Re yep, it's rebuilding. See that? Now it's it's well very close to the table. Don't like that. So let's just add this back here, and I would say we just remove the old table. Okay. Hope this is okay for you. And also the button here. And now in a couple of seconds, we see this looks this looks better, right? I think it looks better. We've got this edit button here. Nice shadow, nice hover effect. You can click here and then the edit form is filled. All right, and now we finally, after almost half an hour, I guess 20 minutes, we implement the edit form. Okay, so you see this here, right? So the old way, my old way was to use a div with the label, then the actual component of Blazor, and also here the validation message. Now we can do this in another way now with Mud Blazor. First thing to well have this a bit more organized is I want to use a Mud card and also then the mud card content so the spacing is done for us it just looks a bit better regarding the ui design now the first thing again maybe you've watched the the video of last week if not i know it's total bs when you say that you can edit the id of an entity you would never do that in production of course but since i wanted to use the input number component here uh, well this this just worked so let's do that again and the corresponding mud blazer component now is mud numeric field that's the one and the great thing is here with all these form components we can say the label is and now the ID and while I'm doing this I just remember that I wanted to show you the uh, responsive design so when I switch that to my phone to my phone yeah to a phone for instance let me use the pixel maybe you see here now how the table looks we see the image ID name edit and these are these things here data label image ID name and so on, right? So this is what I wanted to show you just real quick. So let's move on with the edit form. Okay, so we've got the mud numeric field with a label and additionally now bind value is the character ID. Don't forget here now the edit form has the character model 
and also then the onvalid submit uh, function we will use this as well and after that now what we can do is we can also show the validation message parameter for that is in essence exactly the same thing here but we just add it directly in this component and then we've got the uh, helper text that we can use for instance let me show you the class here the requirements are that the range is between one and the maximum value of the integer type so id has to be one minimum has to be uh, the minimum number has to be one so let's just add a helper text like minimum value is one and that should be it let me put this in a new line and this is now our numeric field i guess let's save this there it is here you see the difference now this is blazer and bootstrap and this is blazer and mud blazer here you already see the error message so the validation already works as well and i think already it looks pretty nice all right okay and this is the helper text nice okay one more thing i want to add real quick just as a side note we are using the edit form here, right? But there are several ways to do this with Mud Blazor. So when we go to the docs, for instance, to the components and then form an input and then the form, there is, well, similar to the table actually, there's a simple way and a, well, maybe not so simple way. I don't know, I guess it's still simple. But what I wanted to say here is there is also a Mud form. Right, so when we have a look at the code here, there is a mud form you can use with also the mud text fields that we will use in a second and the mud buttons and so on. But if you're used to the edit form already, then you can also, as we do it here in this tutorial, use the edit form. And when you have a look at the code here, then this is what we are going to do. Actually, we see the edit form with the data annotations validator for the validation, then the card, this is where I got this from, and so on, all that stuff. And then there's also a last option, Fluent validation, and I know you want to see a tutorial with Mudblazer and Fluent validation, and maybe I will do this as well. So please stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider doing it and hitting the like button means a lot to me. Thank you very much for that. So this just as a side note, we are using, well, the way with the edit form and just using then the Mudblazer components in this edit form of blazer okay now with that out of the way and i hope you're not confused yet let's move on to the input text and instead of the input text we now use the mud text fields okay and this now looks similar to the numeric field in essence so we've got the label with the name we've got bind value with the character come on the name and again regarding validation we can actually just copy this add this here or in the new line and with that now we've got our mud text field so let's have a quick look again there it is this is the name and it is required please give this character a name this is our again custom error message we have added here so we added the uh, required attributes if you also want to do that don't forget to add this using directive but i think visual studio will tell you that something is wrong here if you just write down required but in essence this is already how you do validation you go to your model add this attribute here and if you want you can also add a custom error message. Okay, so this is now the name. And the last simple thing is the text area. So down here now, we also add a text field. It's 
in essence the same thing with the label and the value label now is the bio the value is also the bio let's format this real quick and the only thing we add now to make this a text area is this parameter lines set this to two and with that then we have the text area for the bio see that click edit here dude hanging out in new york city can add some lines and now we've got a scroll bar all right now the next thing is the date and to make this work we have to change our character because let me have a look here again at the documentation date time where is it the date picker there it is it says it here note always use the two-way binding bind date so this is already different to bind to a field of type date time with the question mark so a nullable date time so this is what we have to change here this thing is not nullable yet but now it is and now we can use the component mud date picker. So mud date picker it is with now again the label birth date for instance, like that. And we say bind date. And this is now the character birth date. Okay, and with that now we already have our date picker there it is nice all right looks a bit different this is the one bootstrap and this is now mud blazer all right next is then the radio buttons now these are a bit more complicated similar to the input select here here as you can see we've got the input radio group this is the old way or the other way. And we've got a for each. Now we also use a for each in mud blazer, but the components look a bit different, of course. So let's just start with a radio group. So mud radio group it is. And we also add a class here for the spacing. So margin on the Y axis is a bit bigger and this time it is bind selected option and the selected option here then is the character team id and inside of this component we add a for each with the team in the teams collection real quick let's have a look in our code behind we've got our teams and again usually you would use a service for that these are the teams, Avengers and the Justice League. And as you can see already, we've got also a list of difficulties, easy, normal, and hard. Who would have guessed? Okay, so back here, these are the options. And for that now we use mod radio. The option then is the team ID of the current team. We can add a color to make this a bit more fancy. Again, color primary maybe. And we want to display the team name. And this is then the radio group with the with the radio buttons. There it is, a bit big maybe. So what we can do when we have a look here, radio, mod radio. Oh, this is the API documentation. Let me go here. And I think dense and also the sizes size size small so for instance we can say size is size small yeah little different and dense true Nah, I don't like that. 
but maybe like that. Okay, and what happens if we select Justice League and then go to Edit? Avengers is selected. Great, so this works as well. Here's again the other way, and here also the select box already, and this is what we're going to do next. So for that, we've got the mod select component. Again, let's add component. We add a label here. See, we've got no label here, by the way, right? So for the mod radio group, label, nope. No, no label parameter. I don't know why actually. So maybe we would have to add this label manually. But here for the select, we've got a label, which is the difficulty. And here we bind the value. All right, so we have to pay attention here. Sometimes it's not bind value. Sometimes it's just something different. So in this case, it is still bind value and this is the difficulty ID and again we add for each with difficulty and difficulties all right and here now mod select item with the value difficulty ID and we want to display the difficulty value. All right. Something's wrong. Not the value, the title, of course. Okay, now let's start this again. And here's the difficulty. Nice, normal heart and so on. Click edit, we see easy. All right, great. So we are almost done. Now we've got the checkbox. Before we move on to the image or with the image, let's add the checkbox real quick. There are actually two things we can use here. There's a mud checkbox. Let me show you this one, Mark mud checkbox. This thing here, you know these. And also there's an alternative, which is the switch, right? makes sense as well and in essence both are used for boolean variables so i leave that up to you let me show you both first the checkbox and for that we add the label ready to fight Right. And again, we bind something different here. This would be bind checked. Just one time bind. And this is the character. Wait, the character is ready to fight value. And of course, we can also make this a bit fancy with color primary, for instance. So like that, save this. And there it is. This is now our checkbox. And real quick, the switch is mat switch. And the rest is exactly the same. So you already see bind checked. This is a little hint that it's an, it works in essence the same as the checkbox in uh, exactly the same way, I hope. Okay, we have to start it again. And there it is, right? So we can use a checkbox or the switch. Maybe we can use the switch here. So let's remove this one. Save it. And we see the switch, nice. Click edit, yep, Spider-Man is ready to fight. Okay, and now finally, the file uploads. So the first thing again, let's display the image. As you can see here, we've got the, the other file upload. 
in essence, this is the bootstrap one. And I additionally see here, implemented here, the image. So we see a little preview, meaning when I change the image, I already see what, what this actually is. And we can do, of course, the same with Mudblazer. And there is even for the image, there is a component called Mud Image. And this thing gets a source similar to the actual image element. Character image. We can then make some fancy stuff like an elevation and also add classes, of course. So I want rounded corners, for instance, and also some space like that. Let's have a quick look again. There it is already. Something is wrong here, All right? And maybe add this in another line. This is a simple way, I know. But yeah, so now we see that image here and it is elevated a little bit. And now let's add the file upload. So first we use the input file. So in essence, the same thing we are using here, right? But the thing is, we hide this thing and then use a button to, well, open the file upload dialog, right? So first input file, ID is file input and on change, we call on file change got this method already and how important this thing is hidden. Real quick, the method in our code behind is down here. So what we're going to do is we get the image, set the format to image PNG. We resize the image, create a new buffer with this thing, open a read stream, and then we create the image data based on the buffer here and uh, then create a base64 string in essence so we can display this and then set the character image to this image data. I have to look this up every single time. Of course, I don't have this in my mind. I cannot remember this. Please don't think I do. No, I have to look this up. So, okay, we've got our input file and now the mud button. So first we use HTML tag is a label then we say okay the variant variant filled and you can change this of course this is totally up to you how you want to do this the color again color primary then an icon you start icon meaning it is on the left side of the text and here we use icons, fields, cloud uploads. And then this is important for almost for file input. Okay, so now we know what to open. And after that, we say upload image. And down here, again, a line break, please. So we've got our input file. Again, this is the same thing in essence we're using here, but here we have no ID. And uh, then we use the mud button here to use or to access this input file component. So let's save this. It's rebuilding. Got Spider-Man here. And now let's have a look. We click edit. There he is. This is a really big image. But now we can click upload image. And there we've got our other images. For instance, this guy here. And it is already updated. And you see the avatar also looks a bit different. Okay, so this is in essence the edit form. The last thing is these two buttons here, update character, or create character and delete character. So let's add these two. 
So now below the card, the mud card, we add mud button and then button type, button type submit. And this is really, really, really important because we're using the edit form. And as you can see here on top, we see on valid submit, we will call handle submit. So whenever you want to call this function, you have to declare a button with the button type submit. So this button then will submit this function. And let's also add some classes here. First margin right four and also top and that's it. And then the text, depending on if the character is new, then we say create character. And otherwise, we say update character. Okay. So this would be the create or update button. And after that, now if this is not a new character, then we can actually add the mud button to delete this character. So on click, this is delete character. And again, we add well, the margin right is not really necessary. So margin top in this case is four. And we say delete character. Okay, let's have a look. Create, I click edit. And there's also the delete button. All right, now let's remove the other edit form. and then test this thing. Summary is also not necessary here. Okay, just edit this for some space. There it is. Okay, so we've got our table. We've got the create new character button. Everything is here. And now let's edit this guy call him Spider-Man, for instance, it is already updated. So this update character button is actually not really necessary. But now let's create a new character. We say ID is two, name is Bruce Wayne, rich guy. Can I remember, I think it was April 1915. So we go to the years. 19. Can I go to 1915? Okay, this is interesting. Can we can we just edit this? No, we can't. <laughs> and that's funny. It's just 100 years. Okay, we maybe we have to we have to change this. I think it, there is an option to change that. But Google is telling me that 1915 was I think the first appearance of Batman can only go to 1922. So April 17th it is. And this guy is part of the Justice League, hard, ready to fight. So we add the Batman image, create the character. There he is. Let's add another one. ID three. Tony Stark flying around and shooting. And this was, I think, 1970, May 29th. I hope Avengers is correct. Set this to normal, but not ready to fight. Open, create character. There he is. So now we see Spider-Man, we see Bruce Wayne, and also Tony Stark. And now we can delete this character and Iron Man is gone. 
Okay, so again, this is how to implement the complete edit form with Mudblazer. Again, I will push this now to GitHub and in the video description now, you can get the complete code. There you have it, Mudblazer edit form, the, well, middle way, let's say it's not the simple form and we did not cover Fluent Validation. I know you want a video done with that. So let me think about that. I've got it on my roadmap, but I can't tell you when this is online. Maybe there is no an info card here anywhere. Then you will see that in this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you want to know more, see other stuff, then please again, write it down in the comments comment section and apart from that i'd really appreciate if you click the like button subscribe to my channel maybe don't forget the bell icon here and also don't forget to consider subscribing to my newsletter for these updates here for these videos and also the dotnet web developer bootcamp and the last thing as always guys thank you so much for all the drinks love that and it means the world to me that you are supporting me so thank you very much for your time. If you got some time left, then have a look at these videos on the side here. Maybe there's something interesting for you. Then just click on this thing and then continue watching all these videos on my channel. Thank you very much again for watching for your time. And I hope I see you next time. Take care.